uh, in the next five minutes, I would like to tell you about the physical principles of uh, plasma membrane. As you know, cells in our bodies constantly move. And with each movement, they undergo rapid morphological alterations that require changes in the cell shape. However, how largely inextensible plasma membrane allows for those changes remains unclear. To find it out, we decided to study plasma membrane remodeling with two types of mechanical stimuli. We decided to stretch the cell in order to increase its membrane area or apply the high postmotic shock in order to increase its volume. Those two very simple experiments led us to observe very interesting structures, but let me better show you that in a video. Here you can observe that in the moment of stretch, there are almost no changes. But once we release the stretch, immediately plasma membrane invaginations appear. Those plasma membrane invaginations are those small little dots that you can see in the moment of stretch release. We call them reservoirs. And as you can see from the confocal slices, they are distributed in the basal part of the cell. With the hyposmotic shock, similar things happen. When you apply the hyposmotic medium, there are almost no changes. But once we reapply the isosmotic medium, immediately plasma membrane invaginations appear. This time, however, those plasma membrane invaginations are much larger, but still they are distributed in the basal part of the cell. We call them vacuolac dilations, or simply VLDs. The VLDs have been already observed before, and they have been assumed to be a mechanism to regulate cell membrane area. But as you could see, the reservoirs and VLDs are much different. So we thought that the nature of those structures might have another explanation, and it needs to be hidden under the surface. So our hypothesis is that the, the VLDs are caused by the water being expelled from the cell and trapped between the cell and the substrate. And if that was true, then VLDs should not occur if we eliminate the confinement of the water by seeding the cells on a water permeable substrate. And this is exactly what happened. Here you can see that in a water permeable substrate that is seen on the left, VLDs do not occur, while on a water impermeable substrate on the right, we clearly observe the VLDs. Afterwards, we checked if the reservoirs and VLDs were occurring in a uh, in an active or passive way using ATP depletion. And we found out that the above structures appeared in a purely passive process. And given that it's a passive process, then the plasma membrane should be regulated as simple synthetic lipid bilayers. But wait a second. Those cells, which are much more complicated, adapt their membrane as synthetic lipid bilayers? Let's check that. Here you can see the model that was established for synthetic lipid bilayers. And it says that the easiest way for the cell to store the volume is by making hemispherical structures just like VLDs. And the easiest way to store the surface is by making tubular invaginations. So if that was the case, then our reservoirs that you could see in the beginning should indeed be tubular invaginations. So we performed additional experiments, and indeed we were able to observe tubular structures, meaning that our hypothesis was correct. Afterwards, we checked another pathways in this model, and all of them confirmed that our hypothesis was fully compatible with the model. So if you ask yourself if plasma membrane adapts a simple synthetic lipid bilayers, the answer is yes. And my home take message that I have for you is that plasma membrane remodels through a purely mechanical process that takes place before any active remodeling. So just like, just like in our daily lab life, no? Some people think that we are so active and our life is very easy, but indeed, sometimes it's a purely passive way. <laughs> Thank you very much.